Welcome to Fitness Bamel first podcast interview with my homie Jew. That's his nickname. It's a uh, tie is J I J I W J I W. Um, and this dude is a total stud in the gym. Um, so I first met Jew uh, because I saw him doing strongman stuff in the gym. And I was like, whoa. And I just went up to him. I can't believe I went to you. Yeah, for sure. I went up to you. And I was like, hey, man, I don't know how we first met, but I'm sure that's top. I was doing law press. A lot of leverage I'll bid. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, man, this dude can lift some weight. And uh, so we started lifting and started talking. And so I, I wanted to get him on the podcast. My goal here is to highlight his story and his life so that you out there can see that being a regular dude or woman that wants to just get stronger, get leaner, get like tougher and compete maybe, that it's totally possible. That's the whole point of this this uh, interview here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him talk, tell a story, but it's it's fascinating. We'll talk about his brand, his clothing brand. Yeah. Talk about uh, his competition that he won here in Thailand, and he's going to France, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll just we'll hear his story. But um, welcome, Jim. Hey, Brad. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, and just to, for all you uh, macro counters and calorie counters, we don't really do that. We're drinking some uh, good beer as we uh, talk. <laughs> Got you, man. One of the best things in my favorite, I don't know about you, man, but one of my favorite things about competition, jiu-jitsu, for me, jiu-jitsu, MMA, or any strength event is drinking some good beer after. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's good. The other time, uh, it's good for recovery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so tell us your story, like what got you interested? I mean, maybe you don't go all the way back to your whole life, but when did you start getting interested in fitness? And then, cause most people kind of have evolution where they start getting excited about like, I'm going to go to the gym and look better. Like I want to go like, press girls or I just want to get leaner or six pack and all that kind of stuff. And then they start realizing that they're in the gym. That is important. But if you have this mentality like we do, you want to you want to be strong and you want to push yourself. You want to lift some serious weight and you want to do some really cool stuff. So how did that? What's that profit? I so since high school, I I've, I've played a lot of sports, and so I started weight training since then. But it was just mainly for to get better at my sport, to get bigger, faster, and stronger for the sport that I was doing. So I was playing soccer, water polo, tennis, and all that. So I was weight training like to get better at that. So it's always been about functional stretch for me. Back then I didn't know how to squat and bench or deadlift. It was just like yeah, you have stretch coach. No, no. I mean this was back in like seven, so I was six, I was seven. Oh yeah. By the way, if you went, how old are you? I was thirty-three. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't know idea about squatting, benching, or anything, or overhead pressing, or power clean. So it was just like lateral down, you know, active right. curls, yeah, and all that. I did them anyway, but then I didn't start getting into strongman until when I was living in Sweden, it went bachelors. So this was back in 2015. For the crowd, say that's probably the best. I mean, I still don't be the only one other than Sweden that I could think of that you're like, oh, hey, strongman. But he, like that's the only countries that like throughout history of strongman have done amazing. It's, I mean, it's a national sport there. Yeah. They, they respect the hell out of it over there. That's so, so I, I, um, back in 2015, I was, I was two months away from coming back to Thailand from good. And then I already had a gym membership um, at this fitness center. Um, oh, by the way, step away for Indian people. I didn't mention this. We're in Bangkok, Thailand. This is Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, Jew is in this Thai, so we're in Bangkok. So I, I'm sorry, and I did for the crowd to interrupt you. But okay, so you were there last two months. Yeah, and then so it didn't make sense for me to extend my gym membership. I think they only had like a day pass, which was fucking expensive. And then I think they had a, a six month membership, which it wasn't worth it for me because I was leaning in two months. Gotcha. How long were you there? Ten years, man. Okay, cool. I had a bachelor's over there. Gotcha. So, um, so we so, say gym. So was this a like a workout facility? It was. It was a fitness center. Yeah, it was a commercial gym. So, um, it was expensive to buy to pay for a day pass. So then I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'll just train at this gym next to my house, which I I knew that there was this gym next to my house all along. I just didn't think much of it because it was just like a door, like just a regular door. Oh, I love it. A door that there was a sign saying gym, so that's how I knew the gym. I thought it was, I thought it was like just a, like a condo gym. So I didn't think much of it. I never went there, but I'm like, you know what? I have two months left. So let's, let's just do it. Let's just make the walk out of it. So then um, I opened the door, nothing. I to go down the stairs. I think like three or four flights of stairs. And when I got there, it was this huge training hall with this strong man, a powder thing, and just basically like a proper functional training gym with some machines too. But to this day, 
to this day, that's still still the best pound gym I've been in. Dude, it was just like it was just like I think like like ten squat racks lined up, and then um, stone and the platforms and then all the strongman stuff was so it was basically like a a track, and then and then the gym was in the middle of the track, and the power racks platforms. All kinds of different barbells, a shit ton of plates. Well, that's really a tree. Stockholm. Wow. And then the strongman stock was at the back, so on the track. You would do your strongman training on the running track. But it was for athletes. So you had like all the um, all the national team guys going there, which I don't know how I didn't find out about it when I was in there. It was right next to my house all along. That's crazy. So uh, if you're watching this, you wondering, meaning for guys like us, when, when you find a gym like that, which they're rare. They're very rare. You're like in awe, and that's that's like winning the lottery. Because every gym, most gyms in the United States are you're hard pressed to find a platform. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, you yeah. can't find a log. Yeah, you definitely can't find stones. No, in the states or man, the states, man. Here there's only one gym. That's also factory. Yeah, and that's where we go. Yeah, uh, yeah, in the states. So, okay, dude, I didn't know this is crazy. That's awesome. So you went there, and you had three months left, right? So what? Yeah, around right, two, two, two months. Two months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that's how I got into the gym to to stone man and power the thing. So what was it like? Like the- I, I was still like when I when I when I started training, that I was still one with it because you can also do the one with the stuff with with the squat rack, right? Yeah, yeah. you roll pull offs like that. But then I slowly got interested into powder pool because of the people there. But what was the atmosphere like? It was was it it like, was but to like energy, right? Like the people. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I was like very good energy there. Very very hype there. Wow, oh, I love that. And they had like an evening crew and then a morning crew that would train there. So I would join the evening crew because I would train the evenings and it would be always good. Everyone was so supportive. They were all competitive. So they were all pushing you and you were pushing them as well. <laughs> but I was still a beginner. So when I, like, I was still weak as fuck, but I was like, I was, I was, I was watching them and I was, and I was observing. Damn. I would love to go back now and train there because yeah, hard, yeah, you know, awesome gym, awesome gym. What's your name of it? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> That's what I wanted. No, I know exactly. Yep. It was just a small sign gym. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I love that gym. Dude, that is. It's the next to my apartment all all the time that I was in there. Uh, onions, that is how it works in the world of strength, man. Like, finding a gem, like, and it's not like they're shutting out a bait. They're not focused on marketing and all this other stuff. They're focused on, like, this was this was back then, too. So now I think that they're, they're shipping more, more shipping more, more, uh, more rocket thing for the gym. Yeah. And then, I, I doubt it was, I doubt it was six, like, 10 years away. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, they're just, they're in it to win it with, for, for lifting heavy shit. Like, they're, yeah. they're, that's amazing. I didn't know that. That's, yeah. But it makes sense because it's like the stress capital, right? Like, yeah. I mean, like they, they love their, and love their stress sports. Yeah. I mean, I'm going over there. I wonder how many other spots. If you're, what, if I got Al got my buddy, it's, it's, it's actually not, not pop because I asked the guys that it, it's not that popular in stock in, in Stockholm, but more popular outside of Stockholm. So it's all home. It's it's a capital. Also, it's yeah. still like it's still people are into like Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah, fitness, abs, and all that. But they popular outside of Sweden, outside of Stockholm. That's where it's very big. Yeah, you know, I got I've got a really good. I'll go out if you're watching this. Just to have comments for you. I've got to ask you about this because he's one of my very good homies from Sweden, Swedish, and he's in the south of Sweden. So I, I I'd love to pick his brain on that because that's quite that's super interesting. So you're there and you're like. I mean, you got to see like guys just and girls too, just doing massive shit. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. I don't mean, know. Oh, that's insane. That's amazing. Um, yeah. so you're there at only for two months, two months. Uh, and it, and then she was very many. Yeah. Then I had to come back here and then, um, so I started strong man. So the first two weeks I was still doing wide running. This was when I first started training at, uh, at the gym. And then, um, so I think I always started doing strong man, like the last three, four weeks I was there. That's it. That's wow. it. So that's for the audience. This is amazing because all you need is a small amount of exposure. So, so I learned all I could in, in that month and that month and a half, two months I was there. I, and I was there, but then like still not enough, you know, like I wish I could have stayed there for another like six months oh, cool. just for that. Cause um, as soon as I got back back then, like 2015, there was no, there was, well, there was like no strong man. Nobody knew about here. I mean. How to think strong man it was just bodybuilding. Now it's a lot better, but back then there was so I had to train a commercial gym here and then I just had to like, you know, just squat that lift. Damn. Yeah, that's what I I'd be you know, when I was I'm stuck with the same thing in most time that drug all over the world. And I was living in Kurichima, Brazil for six maze and six months. And the gym that I went to didn't even have Olympic bars. They have these weird bars. I mean, 
the people were really awesome. And I, how long ago was this? A year ago, about when I, before I moved here, I was there for six months. And there's a strength gym in, um, it's a really famous one, actually. Yeah. I, I've, they actually had run at, at Muscle Factory. They had a video of it. Oh, it's, really? Yeah, I think with Chiba. And I forget the name of it. I talked to them. I was going to go. But it's, you, you get an Uber out there. It's, it's like 15 bucks each way. And it was just like, it's, you can't do that every day. It just gets too cost prohibitive or it's too cost prohibitive. Anyway, so yeah, I, I couldn't even find, court couldn't find a living. Now, there was some gyms that had that. They did not have platforms. They definitely didn't have logs. They didn't have stones and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's it's a challenge. So, what did you do when you got back here? Well, back, I, I just started squatting. That's all that I could do. That that was so I hated. Squatting, deadlifting, overhead pressing. And then I think... Uh, With Olympic bars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at least they had that. They were pretty decent gyms. Still commercial gyms, but they had decent bars and that place. So, that's that's all you need, right? And they had a power rack, which was always empty. Oh, they had a power rack. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Good. Yeah, so they had that one power. I was training at uh, this gym in Oslo, and they had one power rack, and it was always empty, and I was always there. Of course. Which is good, though, because I had the whole rack to myself, yeah. and I had the baits and muscle. It was okay. It was all right. Do you um, see the guys doing any bicep curls in the, in the power rack? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> worst, man. Yeah, I've seen that shit. There were some. There were some. Yeah. Um, That's just insane. Yeah. Uh, they don't know any better, though. I think they don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the camera is yeah. on him. Yeah, yeah. probably. Because yeah. you're, you're you're allowed to do it in the rack. It's actually I wouldn't say it's allowed, but there's nothing wrong with yeah. doing it in the rack, right? Yeah. But then it's like come on, man. So I'm gonna tell you what I used to like familiar with. I want to hear. I want to hear your opinion of this. Okay, so in America, there's a gym. Have you heard of Planet Fitness? I have. Okay. Yeah, you know the policy. Yeah, but I can't be too loud there, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. They can't lift and drop of weight. Meaning, yeah. that includes you cannot deadlift, cut yeah. that weight. You know, you have. I don't I guess you have to do it soft. I, I don't know, but if you're doing like 400 pounds, you're not like oh, I'm gonna sit down. Not like that's the thought. And they kick people out. What do you think about it? They have a halt alarm too, right? Oh yeah, I got the one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they did. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. I think Brian Shaw, you know Brian Shaw, yeah. I put one with any alt and they went to our fitness just just to do that. It'll max out all the machines. Just see it, man. That's I love, and then uh, I think I think the staff were not to them, but they didn't kick them out, but they just asked them like, hey, things like, well, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot to do. Yeah, wow. Uh, okay, so I think they can keep you out though, right? What do they all keep you out? Yeah, I worked at one for dude. I worked at one in uh on, on Wyndham and Hamilton. But but, there, but there's many branches, right? So I guess the titles are like what oh, branch of all. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. Um, they get pizza too or something for the oh something. Yeah, they had like a which is antithetical to fucking the point of being in the gym, I guess. But it, I mean, pizza's good. It's just, why have a pizza day? Why not have like a smoothie day? Whatever. So you're, you're back here. And then, so how old are you at this time when you found true strength training? I was 26. Okay. So you get back here 26. How long did it take before you got into, found a gym that had a year or two years after I moved back, also factory open. But even back then, like they didn't have any stones. It was just muscle factory. It was just um, starting out. Yeah, so they had uh, weighing machines, a shitload of dumbbells, uh, and um, yeah, heavy dumbbells, and then uh, a few power racks. It was a it was a bad environment. Everyone there was just they had that you know hardcore training mentality. Yeah, yeah. So um, gym wise, it was not so much of a difference from the commercial gym. It was still better though, better in every way. Oh, they had my like platforms, and you can actually drop the weights because um, at the commercial gym where I trained at, oh, and because it was in an office building. So that was definitely too heavy. The staff would come warm. They would, you know, tell me, go, hey, he thinks lower the, lower the waist more Japanese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all the back day was, that was it. That was, that was the, and you live, I live close. Yeah. So I live, I had like less than a 20 minute drive or something. And you're closer, man. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm within eight minutes to that. Well, yeah. 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 It took the last week. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's why I chose to live in this area. Yeah, oh, why? Yeah, okay. okay. For that gym, I, I'm blessed. To be it's a good gym. It's a it's a good gym. Yeah, I'm gonna do a thing. But then, or then, and then I think uh, a few years after that, then they started buying stones and uh, farmers walk, uh, yo logs. So, but at first it was just like squat racks, on the time and stone bills. They had three platforms back then. If I if I remember correctly, right, okay, that's still good. And they had a lot of bars, a lot of plates. An actual thing is like, do you have a gym? Or, and they had, and they had, sorry. No, oh, sorry. No, you've got to have bars. Like you've got to have different, you've got to have a little more for sure. And then, and then they had a deadlift, squat, kick squat. They had, they had a shitload of power sure. too. The standard barbell plates, the scale plates. And so, it's coming with a gym, they had bumper plates only. And you can like fix so much, you can only fix so much on the bar. I'm from Texas, so I, I like the 45. Yeah. You know, I like the yeah. old school 45 with 20.2. Yeah. So you know, as well, 20.4, 20, 20. I think. Yeah, yeah, I like those. You grab them, put them in. I use them all the time. Yeah, that, that, that. So when you're traveling, 
internationally, most places only really have, if there's a real gym, they'll have one per place and they're all kilos. Everything's kilos. Yeah. And then, they're fat as hell. Yeah. The super, the other ones are good. Okay. So they started slowly building that in or at muscle factory started yeah. bringing in more equipment. Yeah, he, he he expanded the gym first, going diving finger. Okay. And then he started buying all the strongman stuff. So now if you want to train strongman with muscle back, mm-hmm. that's that's literally the only place in Mac where 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 you can train strongman. Absolutely. What you've done is fucking fascinating. Uh I I don't respect a lot of people with, with strength or just anything that's fitness related, like even in Jitsu unless they're like that. Joe Rogan said it the other day, I listened to one of his podcasts, and he's like there's no fakes in jiu-jitsu because you could tell. Like, well, if someone says, I'm a badass, well, then let's roll. Same thing in the gym. That's why I love it. I, I mean, it's meritocracy. Like, so if someone's like, yeah, I could deadlift. This is my this is my pet peeve. And if you're out there and you're saying it could deadlift 800 pounds and you're talking about single deadlift, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> um, so, and you can find out in a gym, like, real fast. It's straight so, to the point, right? Exactly. Straight to the point. So, uh, what's your what's your ethos? What's your... What's your driving force? What you're, I mean, all types of purposes, and I am too. Regular dudes, we're just regular dudes. We like to lift weights. We like being strong. Yep. What drives you? What's your motivating factors? Or what? I mean, obviously, you didn't even know about it, but once you're exposed to it, what drives you, man? What's your? We well, have to have fun. fun yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I started setting small goals for myself. I'm goal oriented. When I um, set goals, I, I'm more motivated. So set small goals for yourself. So when you say that's that's fucking awesome. So when you say set small goals, so the goal. So, so for example, about my first goal ever was to end at 500 pounds, which is 227.5 kilos, and that was my first goal. I was extremely driven back then to like accomplish the goal. Yeah. I'm goal orientated. Yeah. So if I train like if I day with with really no goal, then I I lose motivation quickly. So this is this is really and then, and then my goal is about bigger and bigger, obviously. Yeah. So this is this is really helpful for someone. Looking from the outside in, yeah. Meaning, how to set goals. So your 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 strategy for success, which you are successful, what you do in the gym and get competition. Uh, your your strategy for success is to set goals, not time goals, not body weight goals, not but specific lifting goals for uh, like overhead. It's kind of a sport. Yeah, it's sport. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever goal you have, set small goals. Not 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 too big a goal at first, because then it will seem too far away, right? But small goals. Eventually, those small goals will lead to your ultimate goal. Yep. And there's one, there's a quote that I already, uh, I, I listen to top podcasts with, and inspirational stuff. And one of the guys said, imagine yourself, I think maybe Steve Jobs said this. He says, imagine yourself off of a stairwell. You're looking up. You, all you see after four or five stairs is the clouds. And you can't see anything below. Only you know that it's safe. You know yeah. how sure it's safe to yeah. go up there. That's where you want to reach your goals or whatever. He goes, you just take one step. I'll take about a time. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's it. I mean, how to make goals. Have, have big goals, don't go too far ahead just yet. Set small goals first, reach that, and then attack the next goal. Awesome. And your goals get bigger and bigger. As you progress, as you get stronger or whatever, you know, better at your craft, then your goals will get bigger. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I love about true strength dudes and girls too, there's some definitely girls. Oh yeah, absolutely. Is the support level, meaning that if you come in, same thing in gyms, actually, like if someone's tumble and they're like, Hey man, I just kind of want to learn or they're lifting, they're kind of tweaking something wrong, whatever. It's really, everybody's like, Hey man, you know, they would ask the question, Hey, you know, uh, this, and it's, it's, it's basically all about support. And it was really interesting. The reason I say that is because what you said earlier about in Sweden, you said every, that's, that's key. You said everybody was super supportive and you would think. Like people looking from the outside in that don't understand this community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they think like a bunch of dudes like our oh, herds are stronger. Yeah, but you're saying the support. It's the nature of of the strongman sport too. Like it's a camaraderie between the athletes. It's the only sport I think where like you're well be the other guy at the same time you want to see them do well. You want to see them make the lift. Yep. And the camaraderie is really really nice. Yeah, I I love it. Even all the columns that I've been to, like it's we support each other. All the athletes they support each other. You don't have tacky, oh here's tacky. You don't have sleeves here, take my sleeve. You don't have a suit, oh here's my sleeve. Dude, I I, I love it. Yeah. But then, but then on the platform, it's 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 go time, you know. But when you're done, it's let's say you cross the line first, and then you go back and you share the other guys to cross the line as well. That's what I that's, 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 yeah. I, almost every strongman competition that I see, there's guys and the the, the guy that's behind. And if time goes out, he's still struggling. Yeah, he got it. Yeah, I was standing by the Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Even even though the time's over, you know, for like a farmer's walk or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
or stones or whatever. It's phenomenal. It's a it's a unique sport. So we all know what it takes to like to train for a competition. It's a, it's a very small group of guys, right? It's it's not a popular sport. So when you do it, you're all in, and then you support the other people around you. I love that, and it's so true because I, I everybody that's in, I see this. At the, even in Muffet Factory, I, you know me, I'm there and I'm constantly like trying to include everybody into the the group or try to include. If you're in a gym and you see a bunch of strong dudes, this is for everybody watching, out there and they're doing some crazy lifts and they're stuff and you're like, I want to be part of that. Go in and talk to them. They'll, they'll definitely be supportive. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I believe it. Oh yeah. Um, and then uh, real quick break and they'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. Uh, had to do a refill on the bridge piece. Um, okay, so Jew, let's talk about some uh, where you competition in a second, uh, Andrew Brand as well. Oh, we're gonna talk about PRs. Let's say go ahead with your uh, stats, like your body weight, your your height, and your uh, centimeters. Do you, uh, everybody uses centimeters. What's that? Bush from America. Like, yeah, shoot, man. Centimeters? Oh, no, I did the foot, man. It's gonna be better. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 180 centimeters tall. So that's like six foot. I'm kind of five little, four, four, five, eleven. Okay. Um, I weigh, I don't. Uh, 100 kilos, so like 40 and 40 pounds. Okay. Uh, my body weight fluctuates, but I'm around 100 kilos. Okay. My... And what's your comfort? Would you need to peak? Are you, are you peak at that? I used to do under 90, okay. but now I do under 105. So I strong man that is uh, U80, U80, U105, and then opens for the men's. So I do either 90 or 105. Why'd you switch from uh, 90 to 105? Yeah, I mean, when, you, when you keep gaining muscle yeah, and gain okay. weight, and then when you weigh like 100 kilos or more, Cut and for the way cut is like some people do it. Some people they they cut like 10 12 kilos, but I'm like, you know, if I weigh that much, I might as well just grow into the, the next weight class, which is 105. Copy. So, PRs, so, uh, anything strongman the same? So, obviously, we're gonna do squat. Uh, and just for the channel people, just so you guys know, and you could definitely say it, and I know you probably do. I am not a fan of flat bench, uh, I have no labor connected, and it it, it it every time I do it, it's not just me though, I don't think it's a very Functional actually thought no, it's not. Yeah. It's so but whatever what are your what are your PRs? I um, so my my deadlift, my best deadlift competition is four hundred kilos, whatever it any. And um, I, I re I recently did that in uh in October in France. And then my if I would do that, man. That, that's bro. Right. So you get a little weight. My okay. best raw that was my, my best uh was that with straps or without straps? With with straps. Yeah. Right, then it's too too a lot to wear that in November. And then uh, recently in Hong Kong, the, two weekends ago. I both weighed 360 kilos raw with just straps. That's 800 pounds around, or slightly under 800 pounds raw. And then my best lock press is 140 kilos straight, or 310 pounds. Locked out everything. Locked out, yeah. In competition as well. 140 kilos, which is 200. So that's like 20 million pounds. Yeah, yeah, 310 pounds. I'll do it at 8 pounds. That's actually something, yeah. Farmers walk, I've done 170 kilos per handle. So it's 375 pounds per handle. Straps, of course. No, no. No straps. Straps. Raw. Yeah. yeah. 300 and how many pounds? 375. 375 on mushroom kilos. Just what I, I think it was under 10 meters. But it was, it was, it was not a training. Oh, I'm not a lot too sure. Yeah, I don't know. But not at all though. I'm not a lot. It was not a training. I don't know. Stones, you worked on stones. Stones, I've done, uh, I'm going to lap a 180 stone, which is the biggest stone we had at Wazzle Factory. But I'm, I'm yet to, and able to extend it, yeah. But I, but the most I'm done, all lap and extension, um, and load is 160. I know 150 is 330 pounds, so 160 is 3, 350, yeah, 350, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I've got a 140 still to shoulder. And then you were telling me the gym of the day, which is super badass, uh, and your yoga block, you're up to what? I've done 410 in Bellis so or 415, I can't remember, but yeah, around four, 400 Bellis or 15 meters. Now that brings up, I'm so glad you said that because uh, anybody who's watching this, just to know that I am not an accessorizer. I'm not a fan of it at all. I think that especially men, when they go to the gym, they want to wear all the cool shit so that everything's so strong. And you mean, uh, you mean belts and all that? Belts, the straps, the strap, and like when they're doing like 225 pounds, yeah. the strap with 225 pounds on a deadlift. Yeah. That's retarded. Um, what are your thoughts on accessories and when you use them and live i think in, in the off season so i've been taking like six months with no columns in sight you just want to get stronger than shame without it get the most minimal equipment as possible but it's going to get you stronger no so yoke walks doing doing squats and deadlifts or farmers walk with no belt that is strengthening your core like after a little thing else and then when you put it on it's going to make you feel even stronger and the thing is in competition they allow it so as you get close to competition i recommend you start wearing the belt or whatever else equipment that the club allows them to wear because it it does take some getting used to it's not like okay, today i do a 400 kilo yoga with no belt 
next next week I put on a belt, I'm not gonna be able to do a 430 or 440. It takes time to get used to it. It takes time to get used to the belt. That's the intro brace. Same as the other thing, you know, when you wear a belt for the first time, it's gonna feel uncomfortable. It's gonna be into your skin, it's gonna fucking hurt. Yeah. Because powerlifting belts are thick. Strongman powerlifting belts are thick, right? They're 10 millimeters or 13 millimeters thick. So when you get out of a deadlift position, it's gonna feel a bit awkward. So it takes some getting used to it. But when you get used to it, then it's gonna help you. You're gonna feel a lot more powerful with it. Actually, but, but yeah, like in the off season, like, that's really good advice. Yeah. That's really good advice. Like I, yeah. Some some people think, oh, I, I wear I want to wear elbow sleeves. I want to get like tanky and put it goes warm. Oh, okay. No, it's it takes time to get used to. So you're saying on the did you Google the yoke walk? You're at you're how many? Four hundred, four ten, I think. I remember it's on my Instagram. So guys, go check it out. Yeah, it's on my Instagram. Hat, so I'll put hat NJB underscore any. Yeah, I'm, but right now you're seeing it on the screen, so I'm gonna edit that in. Uh, was right Thank you. Uh, Thank the works, yeah. I think it was 410 or 415. Kilos. Kilos, yeah. Yeah, no belt. And actually, so I did that three weeks ago, right? Or four weeks ago. And then last week, I did, I tried 400 again with a belt. It didn't feel that nice. It didn't feel that great. But like I was saying to you earlier, right? Like it, it beats three weeks. I felt my core felt stronger and more stable for sure. But I just felt awkward with a belt. Because I'm, I'm so used to doing it with, without, without a belt. Yeah. yeah. But in comp a competition, if my next call and there's a heavy yoke wall, I'm definitely going to wear a belt. Because you're allowed to wear it in competition. You'll be able to feel stronger with a belt. Yeah, dude. Uh, Drew and I had lifting. Not a lot, but we lift them every Saturday. We're like, this is my feet. Like, two Saturdays that have been there. Hey, you ready? I'll train. We get, and Saturday the seven is when we for sure do them there at that time. And uh, he hasn't been there for some reason. You know, family shit or just out or out of it traveling whatever but we when we're there at the gym together we definitely lift yeah there. and yeah. it's fucking awesome but the one thing that we have not done which i have not wanted to look forward to doing and training with you is on the walk yeah if it's sure. that I, to me that's one of the ultimate you know, hey are you strong or not you know yeah but you go shit down your back yeah and lift and not that yeah. like because i know you know and move yeah you gotta have real core yeah yeah so sure. i love that lift it's a pretty like straightforward test strip how much weight can you have on your back and walk with it Exactly. It's, yeah. So, while having the geometric course of pull you, yeah. when you start yeah. doing this, it bore like a shit that start yeah. going. So, how really strong is your yeah. iron? Well, yeah, a lot. When you think of strong man, you think of, of yoke. Yo, the yoke has to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Heavy yoke, too. Yeah, heavy yoke. Yeah. Yoke and stones. That these are the two first exercises you think of. You, you think and I think armor armor armor. Armor. Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. I, I'm going yeah. Armor, stones, yoke. Some kind of deadlift. Yeah, that's why I stole it. Yeah, some car deadlift. Even if you don't like, Want to compete in a strong man? Doing I mean, yoke would definitely help you. It'll make you get stronger. It'll help you build muscle. What did you say? No, no, no. Fuck yeah, dude. That's I mean, that's it's so uh, the squats, deadlifts, overhead presses, and incline press are what make people strong, in my opinion. Yeah, right. So sure. those those ones, bread and butter. Uh, yeah, bread and butter, and that's just if you want to get stronger, you got to do those. Yeah. The thing is with the, the yoke, it, it really encapsulates, encapsulates the 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 squat. But then it also encapsulates the farmer walk, you know? Yeah, you got to show. So it, it's like, I think it's the ultimate. And it's good for conditioning too. Absolutely. It's, it's yeah. And you can combine them. Yolk, 15 meters. And then farmer's walk, 15 meters. Um, All right. Competition time. This is this is awesome. So we first met, uh, he was telling me, he's like, oh yeah, they're training and they're uh, And I, I was like, yeah, I'm going to France. Like, you want to France? But I'm like, why? He's like, oh yeah. He was totally played it out. You didn't even tell me you won. You're like, oh yeah, I don't know they, well, they were, how do you go to France? So how much is it? Like me and you're like, oh no, I know for free. I'm like what? Let it, tell me, yeah, what happened? Well, no, I I um I paid for my my own flights. Gotcha. And I think the organizers can come because it was a pretty big come. It was the uh, World Ultimate Strong Ranch Championships under 105 kilograms. So they paid for the accommodation, and we had to pay for just our flights, and and yeah, and that was it. That's it's, that's all yeah. awesome, man. So tell me what competition you're going to be. How many have you done? Or, or was the one that you won? The guy the ran, how did Brandon go? I've done a lot, man. Like ever since 2018, 17, I've competing pretty regularly. Um, and so France was, that was the biggest call so far that I've done because that was the, the world, world ultimate strong ranch championships. So it was all the top guys from around the world, mainly from Europe though, and some Americans. So it was five events. First event was the max deadlift. And because the deadlift is like really popular, that first event is a separate event on its own. So it was the World Better Championships, but it was part of what was the heaviest. It was part of it was part of the um, uh, the World Ultimate Strongman Championships. Sorry, what was the heaviest one? I won I won the deadlift. So I won the I won I won the the deadlift event. 
I put 400. So I won the world. I won the. I won the world deadlift championships. Yes. And then I came sixth overall in the whole comp. I was so bad. I was so beat up after the deadlift. So I lost. I lost points in the other events. So what are the? Uh, what are the? What are the events? The other events. So yeah, it was the event. In the pictures. There you go. Bro. First event was a match of deadlift. I won that one. Yep. So I won the world deadlift championships. And the next event was Farmer's Walk. It was 150 kilos per handle. But the handle was so fucking low. It was like the pickup I was right by your ankles. Holy shit. So no one finished it. I think only like three or four guys finished it. I came in, I think I came in third in that event or fourth. I can't remember. How far did you walk? I think 10 meters back and forth. So 10 meters one way and 10 meters back. So you get a turn with it. No, I got bro. Yeah, yeah. But the but dropping is worse. The handle was so low. Pick up. Yeah. So I'd rather turn with that. Yeah. And then once you drop it, let's say you, you're, you're, you're doing your walk and you drop it in the middle, then, then you're fucked because you got to pick it up again. And it was 150 per handle, so it was 30 kilos. Yeah. yeah. I dropped it twice during my whole run, not including the, the drop at the end. Do you add grip? Do you look grip? No, 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 no. no. I don't think they allow grip. So that's, weird. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point, though. I don't think they allow that. So only just regular grip. Wow. But not many finished that, I remember. And only three or four guys finished it. So you had that event, or second one? Second, yeah. The third event was lock press, 100 and 150 kilo for the reps or weight? For reps. No okay. reps. But I got one rep, and it was still fucking heavy. 150. Shit. 150 kilos, that's what, 350, right? Yeah. That's insane. And then after that, that's awesome. I just, that's the Oh, no, no. Well, well, actually, oh, sorry, I remember. There were two weights you can choose from. One minute fifty and one thirty, and then the 150 came more points. Yeah, exactly. But I chose one thirty, and then I got one rep on that. But that got me, that got me fourth place because the guys who chose one fifty, they can do it. Yeah, so they lost to the guys who only got one rep on like two reps on well with with, with one thirty. And then after that, I started I started thinking my hamstrings. My hamstrings started like felt something on my hamstrings. So after the lock press, I I was just too beat up to do well in the last two events. The last two events. Um, the fourth unit was the loading race. So you had different objects, you had to pick them up, run with it, and then we loaded to a platform, run back to get the other. It was uh, one set, uh, two sandbags, I got you. one two of no stone, and then one, mm -hmm. and then, and then one regular, one regular stone. Okay. So I did three minutes, and then I couldn't get the last one. Because I felt something in the hamstring. I didn't want to risk it. Yeah, yeah. And I was just completely beat up as well. How many hours is this? It was pretty fast. So like basically, you, we finished the deadlift, went straight to the farmer's walk. Finished the farmer's, went straight to the lock press. The only goal there was the deadlift. That was my goal. I, wa I wanted to go there and then I would pull 400 kilos and then win the World Deadlift Championships, which I did. So that's, yeah, I felt pretty good enough. I know. But it cost me though, because I wasn't going to perform the rest of the evening. Yeah. I was too fucking beat up. What was your last one? That was stone to shoulder, 140. That was hard. And the organizers, they, yeah, they, uh, they decided to coat the stone. What is it? Coat. So they put a layer of coat, another layer of coat. So it made it slippery. It was really awkward. How much was the stone again? 140. 140. Terry, man. You have last day bed too. Wow. Last day bed, you know. So I, so that worked. How'd you play? I got one, I got one rep on, on the stone. And I think I was like mid table around there. I tied with a lot of guys on the last day bed. And then I, th I came sick overall. Six from out of 14, 14 guys. Wow. So that it was the main thing though. That that was the that was my yeah. thing. So you're you're how often do you compete and how often do you um play? I I um usually I do like three comms a year. There's not much like there's no comms in Thailand. Yeah. You can forget about that, right? So I have to look at international competitions. So two weekends ago I went to Hong Kong for the Hong Kong that is shepherd chips. And then it was raw, so no still just straps. I pulled 360. A little bit bonny way. So I came second. So the guy who beat me, he weighed 89 and he pulled 350. But sumo though, because they are now sumo as well. Why? What? But no, it's still a, it was still a good pull. Yeah, it was cool. Or some actually competition that they allowed. That yeah, so yeah, it was, but you you were conventional? Or you? I was conventional then. It's a bait, bait. No, it, was, it, was, it was basically like, yeah, it was basically. Um, That's insane. Strongman the lift. Strongman rules. Yeah. Just no suit, and you're allowed to lose stool. That's the check of Dave and put that in the same like category. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good pull. The guy who won, he like he's, he he pulled it. He pulled it fast, man. I think he had a lot more of the time as well, but he could have locked it out. He could have locked his last camp out, but yeah, he's <laughs> strong dude, very strong. Dude. And I'm um, nervous for the deadlift. But it's, but the thing is, like if you're gonna host deadlift con in Asia, you, you kind of have to include stool. Yeah, everyone here pulls stool. If if you restrict it to only conventional. 
I was going to come join. So back to you for the audience here that doesn't, I've lived in Vietnam for four years or five years, I can't remember. Uh, and then I was in, I've been in Thailand for like one year. Basically, when you ask anybody here, any gym, anywhere, how they fake deadlift, the answer is what they sumo did. It's not what they conventional did. Yeah. And for a Texan, that's just awkward. I just, if I'm like, wait, what? Like, I don't, I don't know how I know, but I'm just like, wait, that's really, how much do you like really deadlift? So there's a reason they don't allow civil war to stall man, right? Of course, <laughs> man, of course. But but if it's allowed, if it's allowed, and in part of thing it's allowed, and then if it's allowed, it's, it's not shading, right? And it's a hard pull. Like, I mean, I've tried civil war a few times, and it's it's awkward, man. For me, it's, it's really a hard pull. You know, I'm, I'm much more much more efficient at, at pulling conventional. Yeah. Well, you've got the neural tree. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I can see why like it was easier because what I when I when I tried civil war, the first thing I noticed. Right off the bat is you know, the, the way the motion yeah. is a lot shorter, a lot shorter. But it's still a hard pull. It's still awkward to like yeah. grasp. He's being generous. I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> 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 anyway, you know, here's how I was saying. Um, so uh, let's go into your brand now. Yeah. And like what, what you're doing with your brand. Brand that I'm, it's in that power line. It's called Drip Sort of Wearing Metal. Um, and you can see it on Instagram. You can find, find us on Instagram at Drip underscore MKK. So we make uh, t shirts, snapbacks, and lift socks. Check it out. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, of course. Yeah, go buy, pick something up. Wait, wait, right now we have uh, three teacher designs. I just started. That's it. But we're the other one. I think that might been the, the other one. I think this was it. Oh, this the name. So, sorry, the name. He had the name on the stuff, and I saw uh, Hank was where it went. I, he's like, yeah, that's his shirt. I think it's this one. The other things. Oh, uh, maybe that was it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a logo here, the, the brand logo here, and and my camera sat back. The brand's here. Check out. His brand for sure, and oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're on that. Uh, no, yeah, soon though. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we just started not long ago. Uh, so uh, we're gonna focus a more time into my brand. Yeah, and yeah. us. Well, would you? I'll have all the links. Thank you. Not for sure. No, that does here. Yeah, of course, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I, I hope you guys fill out support Jew, which is what he's doing here. Nice guys, appreciate it. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Any last thoughts on somebody who's watching this? And my thing is. For me, yeah, I started lifting when I was 17. Uh, I was super depressed, suicidal, all that kind of stuff. And then I started to get to 22, and that, that changed everything. Yeah, life, everything. Yeah, everything. But the first thing was lifting. So lifting is closer to my heart than you get to it. It's therapy, man. It's, that's it's therapy. Science. It's only way. So it totally, it's it, gym therapy, right? Yeah. 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 All right. So any words of advice for anybody out there for who wants to get stronger and maybe compete in strong man or just, I think just start doing strong man, like start training strong man. Cause I think the, like, even though you're not competing, you don't think about competing in strong man, but training the strong man events will, will get you stronger. It will get you in shape. It will make, oh, definitely make you lose body weight. With, uh, I mean, body fat for sure. It's. People, people's fear, they get scared. They get intimidated. Like, oh, like, well, what's this Atlas stone? Like, it looks fucking heavy, but there's so many sizes, right? I was walking, you don't have to walk with 140 kilos per handle. You can start with like 50 kilos per handle and then treat like conditional. Like, you, you know, like who walks with do multiple runners with the farmer's walk and it's off with sand back to shoulder. That's great conditioning for you. So yeah, yeah. what if being a strong man, then uh, I recommend uh, find a strong man gym with a, with a, with a strong man training. And then go from there because you need someone to like keep an eye on your technique and like teach you a few tricks there and there. So, and as we talked about before, I think strength athletes, uh, specifically strong that I've seen and been around at gyms, those doing conventional devices. Oh, yeah, and women, too. yeah, this, the, the, the strong is one of the usually the races. Yeah, yeah, they just get started. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's an amazing sport. Or yeah. there you go, we've learned to deal with the problems like. No, go ahead. The problem, the problem here is probably there's there's very limited strongman gyms in uh, in, in, in Bangkok, but hey, you have muscle fat, can you? Yeah. And you have a uh, group of guys who are strongmen there. So, yeah, dude, there's uh, that's the, the only limiting factors. There's a little, a few, like even in Dallas, like there's only, I mean, there's one in Fort Worth that's really good. There's one in Plano that I would see. Uh, there aren't that many. And you can find it, though. You can still find some. Like, yeah, after really, there's like one in every, like, District or oh, intensive, yeah, um, yeah, that's right. But, uh, but we're talking Thailand, that's not yeah. Vietnam. There's nothing, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I live there. I know yeah. there's nothing there. I found a gym that actually had two platforms, and I was yeah. like, it had like, and I lifted there every day. That, that's why powder thing is probably like more, more popular here because it's you can do it anywhere, you can train it at any gym, right? You just need a barbell and a small rack, you need a powder thing. The strong man takes you need the equipment for strong man, 
you know, I'm sure you want to be good at stones. You have to have access to stones. You want to be good at farmer's walk. I guess you can use dumbbells, right? Like for starters. Okay. Well, yeah. But I think it's like a sandbag or a stone or a yoke. You, you actually need the implements. Yeah. It, uh, dumbbells are, I mean, most like, uh, what do you go up to? 100 pounds of dumbbells? Maybe 150 pounds of dumbbells. For a beginner. For a beginner. Yeah. yeah you gotta yeah. put it up your lung capacity. Yeah, so it can light, light dumbbells just run, run the path. Yeah. But if, but if you don't wanna, if you wanna compete a strong one, then you need the equipment. If you just wanna get started, and you just wanna do it to get in shape, and you can improvise, I guess. But now, yeah. there you heard it from uh, the man who's, uh, Literally, and it's like Thai strongman. But it's only me and a few guys. From... <laughs> and they all play each other. I can count one hand though. <laughs> That's crazy. But it's good though. Like it's you know it's at least it's growing. Kind of people are interested in the strongman more and more. So that's that's good. And how we have you. So you know, yeah, it's love it, man. Love it. Well, thanks, Joe. Appreciate it, homie. Let's do the. Uh... Thank you, Fallon. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I hope that the whole crowd here got yeah, some inspiration, some insight into what it's like to be a sure, sure strongman and uh, living, being in a country that does not have the infrastructure for it, but you still find ways. I mean, imagine if you're a Swedish school. I mean, you just do that. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, you became there. Uh, you have started it. Well, only I stayed there like a couple months longer. I know, dude. That's <laughs> the dream. Um, well, thanks so much, and peace out, everybody.